Welcome to Wall Breakers, Advent of the Kennet, a two-player card game set in alternative 13th century history. In this video, I will teach you how to play Wall Breakers using the tabletop simulator module that can be downloaded from Steam Workshop. In Wall Breakers, you are a wall breaker, an individual who can harness the mysterious substance Mythium to magnify your natural talents. Over the course of the game, you will gain power by developing location cards and attacking your opponent with followers. Each player aims to be the first to reach 10 power, winning the game and forever reshaping history. During Wall Breakers, you will accumulate and manage two types of resources, Mythium and Standing. Mythium is the game's currency. You start with 5 Mythium and gain and spend it over the course of the game. Each card has a Mythium cost that you must pay to play it. Standing represents access to one of the Wall Breaker guilds, Earth, Stars, Moon, and Void. Many cards have a standing requirement, depicted directly beneath their Mythium cost. Standing is not expended when playing cards. Track standing using this board and die set next to your Wall Breaker. To start the game, put your Wall Breaker card into the play area and gather your starting resources, one standing of your Wall Breaker's guild and five Mythium. Next, randomly select the starting player. Flip the round tracker, which is located at the center of the table, so that the first space is on that player's side of the play area. Then, shuffle your deck and draw a hand of five cards. Each player may take a single mulligan. To take a mulligan, set aside any number of cards from your hand. Then, draw the same number of cards from your deck and reshuffle the cards you set aside back into your deck. You are now ready to begin the first round of play. Rounds in Wall Breakers consist of two phases. The action phase, when players alternate taking turns, and the rally phase, which includes checking for victory, readying your followers, and flipping the turn order. Let's start with the action phase. During the action phase, players alternate turns, each taking one turn for each of the four spaces on their side of the round tracker. Begin the action phase by placing the round track encounter on the first space of the round tracker. As each turn is completed, Move the counter to the next space. Your turn consists of one action, a list of which is available on the reminder card next to the play area. Let's review the available actions. Gain one Mythium. Take one Mythium from the supply. Draw one card. Draw the top card of your deck. Buy standing with any guild. Pay two Mythium and gain one standing with a guild of your choice. Play a card from your hand. Your deck has three types of cards, events, followers, and locations. To play a card, make sure you have enough standing of the respective guild. Then, pay the Mythium cost and place the card in the play area. Events have impactful one-time effects. Resolve the text on the card and then put it in your discard pile. Followers are people that join your cause. They have strength and health attributes, which I will explain in the section about combat. Followers enter play in the middle row of the play area. They enter ready, in the upright position. Followers can exhaust later in the round, which is indicated by rotating the card 90 degrees. An exhausted follower cannot attack, block, or exhaust again. Locations are places where Mythium can be found and typically gain you power. Each location has an ordered list of abilities called stages. When you play a location, place it in the back row of your play area and place a stage counter on each stage. Let's go back to the available actions. Develop a location you control. To develop a location, remove its topmost stage counter and resolve the stage that corresponds to that counter. Then, if the location has no stage counters left, put it in your discard pile. Use an action ability. If any of your cards have an action ability, you can pay the ability's cost and trigger it. Last but not least, attack. Attacking can gain you power and damage your opponent's locations. I am going to explain combat later in this video, after I discuss the rally phase. Let's talk about the rally phase next. During the rally phase, perform the steps that appear at the bottom of the round tracker. First, resolve any rally abilities. Some cards have abilities with the rally condition, resolve them now. Next, check for victory. 
Each player counts how much power they have. If you have at least 10 power and your opponent does not, you win the game. If both players have at least 10 power, the player with more power wins. If the players are tied for power, the game continues for another round. Remember that victory is only checked during this step of the rally phase. If a player reaches 10 power before or after this step, the game is not over yet. After checking for victory, ready your exhausted followers, gain 2 Mythium, and draw a card. If a player's deck has run out of cards and they cannot draw a card in this step, their opponent gains 1 power. Do not check for victory again. Finally, flip the round tracker so that the second player is the new first player. Next, let's talk about combat. When a player takes the attack action, that player becomes the attacker and combat begins. Their opponent is the defender. Combat consists of three phases, the attack phase, the defense phase, and the outcome phase. In the attack phase, the attacker chooses which followers attack. First, choose one or more ready followers you control. Then, move them to the top row in your play area and exhaust them. These followers are now attacking. In the defense phase, the defending player sends their forces to contest the attack. To defend, choose whether to send a ready follower you control to block one of the attacking followers. Exhaust the blocking follower and indicate which attacking follower is being blocked. The attacking and blocking followers simultaneously deal wounds to each other equal to their strength. Any followers that have wounds equal to or greater than their health are defeated and put into their owner's discard pile. If the attacking follower is still in play, move them to the middle row of the attacker's play area. They are no longer considered attacking. The defender can continue blocking for as long as they have ready followers. Once they have no ready followers left, or choose not to perform any more blocks, continue to the outcome phase. The outcome phase determines the results of the combat. At the beginning of the outcome phase, each follower that is still attacking hits against the defender. If no attacking followers are left, the attack is not successful and combat ends. However, if at least one follower hits, the attack is successful, and the attacking player follows these steps. First, gain one power for each attacking follower. Remember, blocked followers were removed from combat and do not gain power. Then, resolve any hits abilities on your attacking followers. Finally, you may deal one damage to a location controlled by the defending player. Remove its topmost stage counter without resolving the stage ability. If the location has no stage counters left, it is put into its owner's discard pile. Once the outcome phase is complete, combat is over and the game proceeds to the next part of the round. Note, wound counters on any followers stay. The counters are not discarded from play. Some complex or frequently used abilities are abbreviated using a keyword, such as bloodshed or overwhelm. You can find an explanation of all of the keywords on this reminder card located next to your play area. The Tabletop Simulator module comes with four pre-constructed decks, one for each wall breaker. These decks are designed to teach wall breakers while offering an engaging and replayable game experience. Each wall breaker plays very differently from the others, so make sure to try the four decks and the different matchups. In addition, the Build or Draft Tabletop Simulator module offers a two-player draft experience and constructed rules. If you're curious about these formats, check out the next video. Looking for games? Want to stay up to date on the latest Wallbreakers news? Join the Wallbreakers Discord server. You can find the link in the description of this video. You're also welcome to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you for listening, and have fun playing Wallbreakers!